بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد that is with God's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer I witness that there is nothing that deserves to be worshipped except for Allah who is the one true God who is without partner or associate in his rule over the creation of the heavens and the earth. And I witness that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed to over 14 centuries ago, is his servant and messenger. And we send upon him the salutation of prayers and peace and what follows in that traditional salute. Amin. Um, we are here uh, Friday. Most of you all, you all are familiar with the announcement that we're looking at sometime later later this month uh for being able to come back together as a group um inshallah beginning with the uh gathering juma gathering on the outside uh as of yet or as of now the inside gathering is still not uh recommended uh by our health experts our learned persons uh in medicine uh in in the science um, but we are looking forward for the opportunity for us to be together uh, outside very soon, inshallah. So th this may well be uh, among the last few um, streams that we do, just Juma day lectures. Not a khutbah, this is not the salat, but just lectures. Um, this for me is really a last notice lecture. Um, we... we Imam Suleiman reached out to me and informed me of his travel because of the passing of, of really a dear, beloved uh, community member, Brother Anthony Muhammad. Uh, and we, we pray Allah forgive him his sins and grant him paradise. Um, he, he uh, I think uh, he said he was going to be, <coughs> this, this year, if we were allowed to make Hajj um, this year, this would have been his 40th Hajj. I met him when we made Hajj. I think I met him before. Um, but I definitely remember him from the Hajj, and he was there every year. A uh, very, very kind soul, very, very good brother um, who sponsored many people. He Not only did he go to Hajj, he sponsored many people on going to Hajj. Um, and he, he also helped believers in the community with an array of things. Um, so we're just, we, we, we thank Allah for um, blessing us with persons like that in our community. And we ask that Allah always be, be forgive those ones and grant them grant them a spacious grave, grant them his mercy. Um, so when Imam Suleiman he, he reached out to me, he said, look, man, you know, for, for any other um, for this situation, I have to go. And I definitely, you know, by all means understood. Um, believe it or not, I, the, the reason why he was expressing it like that is because, believe it or not, both of us, you know, we're not um, we, 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 we teach. As, a, as an obligation, but uh, we're not like the imams that we grew up under. I'm not speaking of any particular imam. I'm not saying this as a negative thing. What I mean is when we grew up in, our, in the community, I remember as a young man, the imams would uh, be happy to get on the mic. <laughs> they would be happy to get on the mic, and they would ha be happy to, uh, you know, give the chutbah or address the audience. That was something that was kind of a thing that the brothers did. We saw that coming up. But here, you know, we're kind of uh, uh, laid back about it. And me personally, uh, I'm reluctant, uh, believe it or not. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, um, I don't consider myself a public speaker like that. Uh, I speak in the public because I have to out of an obligation, but it's not something that I like to do. Uh, I don't have that spirit that I saw in those men who I have great admiration for uh, growing up. Nevertheless, uh, this is our obligation to serve community. Um, and, and we do we do uh, understand the teaching of our prophet that when we are qualified to serve community, then we have to. Um, so I just wanted to introduce or uh, begin begin the introduction there because uh it was very t it's a very touching situation and i spoke with a couple of community members from the oakland community regarding the passing of the brother including imam Suleiman. so i know uh this is a serious time for us and we've had some losses we've had some losses recently um but we've also had uh what we would call gains um and i'm sure you all are aware you know of 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 of, of, of new life grown in the community and that's the nature of life on this planet earth 
life on this planet earth is sacred uh we have growth and then we have the passing away of things but it's all a part of the cycle and this is the way of god as he has established things so in that regard i was really um thinking on what should we address as a topic today um and it it brought me to something that i see uh uh i believe we need um so in general, I want to speak on the topic of how we are to have love for ourselves and also love for one another. And really, it extends from love from love of and love that comes from God, Allah, our Lord. You know, the world, <clears throat> it gives us bad news often. Um, and we have to be careful because too much bad news can really give us a bad spirit. It can really affect our spirit. Um, I'm sure many of you all watched the debates, the presidential debates earlier this week. And when I went online, I mean, the, the, the Internet was just ablaze with mockery of the debates. And I'm glad that people find humor in these things. Sometimes that's what's necessary in order to, uh, as they say, uh, that as we say traditionally, in order to uh, remain or, or, or maintain a sense of sanity, you have to be able to find humor in things. But it was it's it's it, actually it was humorous. My wife and I, we watched it and we were doing a lot of laughing, but we had a serious discussion as well. How um, after it was over in regards to just the, 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 the plain common common sense fact that this is the state of leadership. And we can be overrun by negativity to such a degree that it can hurt our spirit. And as Muslims, we want to really be protected from becoming um, uh, to, 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 to become, become apathetical or cynical to whereas we give up, we don't see any hope. That's not the spirit of the believer. For us, we see life, our life as individuals, as we just mentioned, as well as the life of communities or societies even. Societies is a broader concept than, uh, well, no, no, communities is a broader concept than society, but uh, nevertheless, communities or societies, they go through cycles. They can go through life cycles. Um, but that being the case, the overall direction of human life, despite the cycles of life, in the world of man or in the community of man or in man's society, the overall direction is one. Meaning what? That no matter what we see happening in the environment of the world, the direction for our life as believers in God and Allah's plan for human life remains. So this work that we're doing and this life that we chose, the life of Al-Islam, we don't see it as a life that is predicated or based in the changes of the seasons of man's world. We see the, the we are rooted in God's plan. And we see that the work that we are doing today, the life that we have chosen, we see it as lasting forever. So America can fade off the scene. The Western world can fade out of existence. But what we have held, what we have grasped, what we have chosen to root ourselves in, which is the life of Al-Islam, that lasts for as long as the earth abides and that's where we want to be always so I, I want to just make the point to us in, in beginning this discussion or this lecture to never let anything feed your mind never let anything feed your spirit more than the word of God the Quran Bad news can give us a bad spirit, yes, but we should never let anything feed our spirit or feed our mind more than God's communication to man. And I often remind students, many of you all know, we, I, I started a school uh, uh, an institute, and I, I like to remind the students that we are told in Al-Islam that the Quran is our book. Al-Qur'anu Kitabi, it's our book. We have an intimate, direct relationship with the Word of God. This is one of the special features of Al-Islam that makes Al-Islam unique. We have a direct relationship with the Word of God. And as we understand it <coughs> in Islamic thinking, God's presence, Allah's presence and His Spirit is more 
in his or by way of his word than anywhere else. So this is what we all have to live with. We have to walk with this. We have to live with this. We should go to sleep with it and wake up with it for the rest of our lives. That God's word belongs to all of us. And God's word should be the dominant influence over our lives as human beings. And I'm saying that to say this. Nothing values us or no one values us more than Allah. No one loves us more than God. No one knows us more than God, our Lord, our Lord, meaning all of our, he's all of our Lord collectively and he's every one of us, our Lord individually. No one knows us more. In fact, this is why we know, this is why we can have faith in the mercy of God. In man's world, we may see a behavior we may see a, a, a way of being in a person and we form a judgment about that person. And we may be justified based upon what we see. But oftentimes what we don't see is the causes behind the behavior that that particular person is displaying. Therefore, even though from an Islamic perspective, we are free to form an opinion we also under, understand from an Islamic perspective, we may not be situated to have the most merciful opinion or to have the most merciful judgment. Why? Because we don't know everything involved with this particular person that is behaving a certain way. But we have faith in the fact, and we know this is a part of Islamic teaching, that Allah is most merciful because Allah knows us more than anyone. So we should never give up hope. We should never give up faith. We should never despair of the mercy of God. And we should know that Allah cares for his human creation as a whole. And he cares for all of us individually more than any other person, any other entity in existence. And in light of that, we have to know that the Quran shows us our true value. The word of God shows us our true value as human beings and nothing else in this world. I don't care if it's a motivational speaker. I don't care how educated the person is. I don't care how beautiful the language of this or that book is. Whatever. Nothing. No knowledge source on this planet Earth shows us our value to the degree that the Quran shows us our value. And I want us to also take into consideration something Imam Muhammad shared with us years ago. Um, and I'm really paraphrasing it. Uh, he said that the most important person in the world is the one that God created us to be. Or the one God created us to become. That's the most important person in the world. The one that Allah created us to become. So... The Quran, we understand it as an invitation to man to become his best self. So Allah, he says, for example, فَأَحْسَنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He says, and perform at your best. Surely Allah loves those who do the best that they can do. So the Quran Allah and Allah through the Quran gives us an invitation to be our best. And it, it, it meaning that it's an invitation for us to be excellent. When we are performing in our excellence, it means that we are performing at our best. And when we are performing at our best, first with our intention and then with our striving, that person that we become is the person that the world needs. And the more of us who wake up to our precious value as creatures of God. And the more of us who wake up and come alive to the perception of our own life that Allah invites us to see through the Quran. The better this world will be today and the better this world will be in the future. And we are given Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, as an example and as a model of the best of what the human being is. You know, when the Satan decided to 
attack or assail our parents, a part of his strategy was what? To show us our shame. So we should understand the, 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 the popular culture of America that shows us nakedness, that shows us sin without any conscience, the foulness in the language, the, 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 uh, uh, the savage behavior that is so prevalent in the popular culture. It is the product of the influence of the shaitan to put before all of our eyes our own shame. And that has multiple effects. One of the effects is that the human being is impressionable and imitative. This is what Allah means when he says he created man from clay. Man is impressionable and imitative. So the enemy of man knows if he can put before man the lowest of himself. That that will be emitted into the environment as an influence. To the extent that the lowest of our behavior as human beings will be seen as a normal thing, as a norm. And it will impress our young minds. It will impress our young people to accept that low behavior. So Al-Islam, one of the strategies and one of the, 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 the ways that Al-Islam gives us a means to keep our cultural life pure, hence our community life pure, is to keep before us the august model of Muhammad the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, and the model of all of the prophets, and the model or, or the, 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 the life and the example of the righteous to show us what is the best, what is the best of the human potential and capacity and interestingly enough this is what we want by nature when I when when you ask a person to define something or when you ask a person to picture something in their mind picture a car or picture a house picture clothes our nature is to not picture in our mind the worst representative or the worst example of that thing if we imagine a car we tend to imagine something that looks really nice if we imagine a house, we tend to imagine something really nice. Uh, we, and, uh, we don't typically conceptualize things in their worst expression. Because by nature, we want to define a thing according to its best expression. So if we really want to have a true definition of what man is, we want to look at the best expression of man. And Allah throughout the Quran and in the tradition of our prophet shows us just that. The best expression of the human being is defining what the best of human creation is to show us what we are and what God wants for us to strive to become. This is Islam. So this is why I say love of self, but also love of God and love of others. We need all of that. You know, most people in the world who act in abnormal ways unseemingly ways unbecoming ways most of them do that because they have been hurt we see uh, ugly behavior on the street we may even have ugly behavior in our own families in our own houses even most of that behavior stems from the person uh, 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 expressing manifesting some type of hurt that's inside of them and in many, in most cases, that hurt that they feel and they are expressing came from or began with someone that they loved. Be it their parent, be it their sibling, be it their husband or wife, even their child. Or someone else, a friend. So here's a person acting out in a way, but they are really acting out hurt. And that hurt in most instances, came from someone who they loved. And what's interesting is, if we can look at the one that hurt them, we will more than likely discover that the cause of their hurt was also hurt by someone. <laughs> the human being in the Quran, Allah says that he created man from water. And one of the, oh, he said he created all living things from water, pardon me. But he also says man is created from water. This is to tell us many things. One of the, but the most important communication is that life is sensitive life. Life is sensitive. Human beings are sensitive. 
And this has been in the language of the cultures of the world for generations. Uh, and men have thought on these things and they've seen these things in the life of people. For example, when a child or when a person, pardon me, cries, either when they cry tears of joy or they cry tears of uh, sadness, they will even have tears of fear. Different spiritual extremes or emotional extremes, same thing. Water, is a, it, water will register or water will show itself in those moments of emotional or spiritual expression. So water has been associated with the spiritual life, the emotional life, the life of man as a creature of sensitivities. And what's interesting about water, one of the interesting things, is that it is sensitive to the touch. If you take a bowl of water or if you go to the pond, a pond or a lake or something, but particularly when you see water that's still and you drop a little pebble in that water, you will see ripples extend from that point of contact out in all directions. And this is how our feelings travel. We can shed, we can spread, pardon me, and share our happiness but we can also spread and share our hurt or our misery. And the Satan, he knows this and he influences the environment of man to confuse man so that man will be contained in misery. But we want to understand one of the meanings of the, of, of the term Muslim itself. Muslim is our religion, and we are also told that our religion is the religion of the nature of man that God created. So this is telling us very plainly that our nature, that God created us for peace. God created us for happiness. God created us to be safe and secure. And God created us to experience love, etc. Allah did not create us for drama for misery, for sadness. And we know this is true because when children come into the world, our young children, that's what they express. They are carefree. The little ones I'm speaking of. <laughs> they're carefree. They're happy. They're loving. They're trusting, so on and so forth. That's the nature of a child. So that's telling us very plainly that that's how God made us originally. But somewhere along the line in our development, those positive qualities can turn and all too often do turn into negative qualities. The child is not even aware of itself, thinking itself to be ugly, thinking itself to be not good enough, etc., most children, you may have some exceptions, but the nature of children is just to be carefree, loving, enjoying life. And where does their security come from mainly? What is the main source of security for the spiritual life of the child so that it can exist in that sort of carefree, trusting, loving way? It's in their sense of having protection, it's in there, and it's really unconscious. They just know it unconsciously. It's in their uh, uh, sense of comfort and protection that they have because of their parents or whoever their caretakers are. This has been literally studied by psychologists. When young children, precious young children, are aware of the fact they have the, or, or they have a sense of comfort and security because they have a loving environment in which to grow up in, then they express these positive traits that we're speaking of. But if they grow up in an environment where they don't feel safe or they don't feel loved or they don't have comfort, then we have the negative traits more than likely, not in all instances, but more than likely the negative traits develop and become exaggerated in the life of that individual. And I see this as a sign from God. Because we are told in the Quran, Allah, as we mentioned before, he's our Rabb. But the Quran as a book, the language teaches us the meanings, 
the language of the Quran teaches us uh, 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 the language of the Quran teaches us the language of the Quran. I was trying to find a fancy way to say it, but that the Quran teaches itself, basically. Allah teaches it, but the way the language is formed, how it's used, these terms or this type of usage will unlock or open up another area where the, where the language is used. So what do I mean by that? For As an example, and this is commonly known in Islamic studies, that the term Rab in the Quran is, is directly connected to the role of the parent over the child. This is why the righteous child is, is, is told, or we, we are given a picture of the Quran, of the righteous child who prays for the parent. And he, he, the, the language that he uses is translated, have mercy upon them because, uh, as they brought me up when I was young. And the term is Rabbayani Sahira. The two parents, Rabbayani Sahira. They brought me up when I was young. So this Rabbayan or Rabbayani, they raised me, is connected to Rabb. And here, Allah, the, the, the understanding is that the nature that we see in the loving parents who watch over the life of the child and provide for the needs of the child, if they have them, and are concerned for the child, and are merciful to the child, that nature that's in the parent was given to the parent by Allah. So the best of parents on this planet Earth have what they have as good parents from God. And just as those good parents care about and provide for and are concerned with and respond to the needs of the child readily and lovingly, Allah does the same for all of us. And I think that that's a sign. As I mentioned, I think that the sign, one of the signs from this understanding connected to the carefree, loving nature of the child is simply this. If we could let go, all of us individually, if we could really let go of our own selves, our own minds, our own egos, and I don't even mean ego necessarily negatively. Sometimes we hold on to something because we're just afraid to let go. But I think if we would let go and give ourselves completely into the care of God, I think if we did that, we would be able to return to the carefree, loving, secure spirit that we see in our children when they're young and innocent. I think that, yes, we would be adults, and yes, we would carry the responsibility of adulthood, but our trust and our dependence upon God as our ultimate caretaker, that would make our burden so much more light. And far too many of us in the world, we carry heavy burdens. We carry heavy crosses. Hurt feelings frustrate the healthy development of human beings. One of the signs is our own skin. Our skin is sensitive. But if the skin has to make contact with the rough surface, it's in the very nature, it's a mechanism put in the very nature of the sensitive skin to grow hard. We call it callus. To grow hard as a protection. Well, human beings are the same way. We are sensitive, naturally. But if we are put in environments that hurt our sensitivities so much, in time we will develop a certain degree of callousness. Not because we want to be, but we do it in order to survive or to avoid the hurt. You know, it's, it's natural for us. One of the things that we know from religious study, religious language, and one of the things that we know from the studies, even in modern psychology, just a basic function or a basic need in the makeup of man is the need to be happy and this need to be at peace, like we, we've been discussing. So when people develop a callousness about them, because they've been hurt, it's a natural response. And I have heard people say, this situation put me through trouble. This situation hurt me. And I'm going to make sure that that never happens again. So the nature that wants to be safe from pain drives them or moves them 
to really reform themselves or put up something. They call it in modern day, they'll say you put up a wall or you put up guards. But you put up something that blocks you from being your true or our true loving self as a protection or a protective mechanism. So we will impose upon ourselves unnatural attitudes, unnatural dispositions in order to be protected from that which may cause us hurt or harm. But the problem is Allah does not want for us to be disconnected from one another. And he does not want for us to be cut off from the experience of love and happiness extending from one another. This is the problem. And we should understand this. When we say nobody can make me happy, that's not real. Allah created us to find happiness, security, peace with each other. That's our nature. We have it from the moment we're born. The child immediately finds happiness and peace and comfort with his mother. So it's in the nature of us to find comfort with another human being. This uh, mic keeps falling off. I don't know if it's happier or, or sad. So this is our nature to find comfort with, with human beings. And Allah tells us in the Quran, believe in Allah and believe in his messenger. And we are told in the Quran, Allah says to his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to them, I am a human mortal like you are. So Allah is establishing in the language that we are to trust human beings. We are to find, because trust in uh, iman, iman, it has the, the meaning of trust, security, safety. That's all of that is included in the understanding of faith. And when Allah calls us believers, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, or he says, Qad aflahal mu'minun. These are individuals who can feel safe amongst one another, they can trust one another, etc. So we are created to have that experience with each other. And Allah even says about the marriage tie that he brought from among our own souls mates. And it says, لِتَسْكُنُوا this teskunu means to find tranquility and comfort. When Allah told our first parents to dwell in the garden, the same language was used. Iskun. Anta wa kal jannah. So God is telling us that we find a heavenly circumstance with mates. So it's easy for us. It tends to be easy for us to identify the fact that other people can cause us hell. <laughs> they get on our nerves. We can't trust them. That's very easy for us to point that out. But there has appeared in our cultural environment language to say people can't be a source of happiness. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Our children make us happy just like it makes us sad when they go wrong. And even the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, we know according to his history even when his son passed uh the the, the mercy the, the tears that he shed and when he was asked about it because his, some of his companions were shocked he said this is from the mercy of the heart that god puts in the hearts of his slaves so this is this is a real thing we are meant to find happiness with one another but the understanding in al-islam is this that allah is always to be number one Allah is always to be uppermost. Therefore, though those people can bring happiness, they are not the ultimate source of our happiness. Therefore, the, 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 the cycle of happiness and unhappiness, uh, 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 a good day or a bad day, is not based upon or rooted in people. It's not rooted in others. It's rooted in our relationship to God. But God gives us from the environment things that bring us happiness. But we never make that which God gives us greater than God. Or we never make the happiness that we get from a human being or some other entity more important than our happiness and our relationship that we have with God. That's the difference. So when you have a good wife, when you have beautiful children, when you have a beautiful home even, our disposition is alhamdulillah, subhanallah. We are always thanking God 
though we are all enjoying a legitimate, happy, loving, trusting, etc. relationship with that entity or that person. Why am I addressing this? Because this time that we're in, it is a time for us to really see no return to the value of human connection. We have to return to valuing our family, valuing our community, valuing brotherhood, value, valuing, putting value on sisterhood. This is the time for us to value the true human life that is created to be united. Human life is created to be united. And this is a part of, we mentioned the Hodge earlier, this is part of the sign of the Hodge. That all human beings are one family. All human beings are one family. And all human beings came into this world by way of a family. And unless something abnormal has occurred, all of us have the same sentiments in regards to our family as all other human beings. All healthy-minded parents want the best for their children. Whether they are somewhere in Asia, somewhere in Africa, somewhere in Europe, North America, South America, they all want the same thing. Therefore, these are considered to be the, the sacred bonds. And this nature in us is understood as the sacred essence of the life of man. But if the environment becomes confused and the environment is such that it causes us to become uh, abnormal, not regular in our very human sensitivities, we won't we will be hindered or frustrated from arriving at the great promise, the great victory that God promises for man. So what I have in mind in this particular uh, line of discussion now is our people, the African-American people. You know, African-Americans, we have been dealt so much misery by, uh, from others. From others, so much misery, so much hurt has come to us. And when we study, when we observe our life today, when we observe our life historically, our tendency is or has been to meet out or return that misery that's been given to us, we return that misery, not on the ones who put it on us in the first place, we return that misery on to each other. So here you have a, a, a black father being oppressed and put down, his manhood put down in the environment. And he can't lash out on the street or outside, so he lashes out on his wife and children. Here you have, like, I hate to say it, but they, they say this, hurt people hurt people. Because it's like ripples. There's, there's the water, the water ripples. So I'm feeling hurt, and I extend it to you. And it can come in many ways. I can just not, the, 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 the wife won't talk to the husband. Or the husband won't talk to the wife. He'll, they'll literally ignore one another. Or they'll lash out at one another. And the children register that. And then they go somewhere and act out. Or they mistreat each other. And it just continues and continues. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. The ripples in the water spreading out. And this began with our coming into America. Really it began with the time that we were captured. Imagine, I think I, we talked about this before. Imagine wherever you are right now going and imagine leaving from where you are right now to go somewhere else like me leaving the masjid or you going to the grocery store imagine on your way there or on your way back you being kidnapped that experience alone is traumatic just being kidnapped but imagine being kidnapped and then taken to type Ty tybee island wherever the uh <laughs> what the savannah or something and then they putting you on a boat chaining you up on the boat and then taking you some, imagine just the compounded trauma now. Experience after experience. And you don't have anyone else to, 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 to release it onto other than the ones who are in the same traumatic circumstance that you are in. This is deep. And it really has crippled or it has drastically hurt. We've always had examples of, of persons who have over, overcome. But this has really hurt our ability to function as happy, loving people who feel safe with one another. 
I have been told personally over years, even before I became uh, a teacher in the religion, I've been told by women that when they were going to get married or when they were coming up, the women in their life told them, make sure you got some money on the side for when he leaves you or in case he leaves you. I've been told by men that they have been told by men and women in their life, uh, don't let her know everything. If you, if, don't let her know what you make. Only give her a certain amount and keep her out of your business because you don't want her controlling things because if y'all don't work out. So what's happening? We have home environments where people are really being prepared to fail. Now, in our minds, we're not seeing it like that. It's a survival. It's a survival mechanism. It's a survival strategy. We are thinking as survivors. And when I've analyzed it, again, I haven't gone all over African America and uh, uh, interviewed everybody, but I, I noticed a, 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 a trend in all of the instances where I've heard this. The, and in most instances, the one giving that advice is giving that kind of advice because that happened to them. Again, the transference of hurt. So, I want to conclude on just a point. These issues that have to deal with our unique conditions, they're profound. But I want us all to know that, brothers and sisters, we, we, we are in this together. We came here together. <laughs> we came to America together. And though the misery that was put on us, the strategies that were used upon us from the outside have formed us to see each other as separate. What do I mean? If you look today, especially uh, from, the, from really today and go all the way back to the beginning of the um, uh, presence of popular culture in our, in our life, being a dominant influence in our life, what is the main influence or what is the main messaging given to young men? That the woman is a piece of meat and she can't be trusted. And they will even say money over such and such. This is how boys are raised. What is the dominant messaging for females in black culture? Look at all of the television shows, all of the movies that you have to stand on your own. You have to be able to stand on your own. And if anybody's going to have your back, it's not going to be your man, not like Adam. So this is a violation now of God's plan. It's not Adam and his mate. If anyone is going to have your back, it's not even God. It's your girls. This has literally. So we don't realize how much we have been manipulated. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, your mind can't fathom the depths of Satan. And it's, that's the actual fact. We can't fathom the depths of Satan. You sit around and say, who would come up with this? Who would want to do this to a whole people? <laughs> so we think uh, we have to know now as Muslims the Shahada doesn't erase these problems you know uh, uh, Allah addressed this type of issue in the Quran people had became Muslim and they were saying we believe and Allah had to reveal say tell say to them to not say they believe but just say we've submitted because faith hasn't entered into your hearts so the heart condition of those people hadn't changed. So they submitted, but they were not yet believers. This is saying then that you can come into Islam, but that doesn't necessarily erase the jahiliyyah, the pre-Islamic tendencies and ways that you had before you became a Muslim. This is a real thing. So what is the, what is the challenge for us today? You all have often heard me say this, and I, and I stand by it. I, 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 I've, I've, I've said here that I don't accept that al-Islam, as we get it in a university or as we get it from the wise and pious teachers in the world, can save us. I don't, I've never meant that as disrespect. We're Muslim. So the, the people of the Islamic world, these are our brothers. These are our sisters. We love them. We are Muslim. But I'm, I'm, I, I make that case on a, on a rational basis of, of the fact that nobody in the history of the world has endured what we have endured. And nobody from observation seems to have these tendencies that we have in the Muslim world. 
So they're, 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 I was saying that we can't receive, we can receive some help, obviously. We have to learn Islam and stuff like that. But I'm speaking of the, 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 the specific medicine needed for our problems. They didn't have those problems. Therefore, their best minds weren't uh, forced to think on these problems. <laughs> People only think of solutions to problems when they have those problems. So no one has traditionally have had our problems. So there's nothing in the literature that really addresses it. There's literature about getting close to Allah, things of that nature. But the systemic, uh, uh, generationally continuing, subconscious tendencies and idiosyncrasies of black people haven't been dealt with. So you may find one guy, he, he may have found his own personal salvation in this or that practice. But it can't reach the whole group. It cannot reach the whole group. And this is not a knock on anybody. This is the nature of Islam. Al-Islam, the Quran, is guidance for the world. So the more the book reaches the different populations of the world, the more it has opportunity to address the specific needs of different people in the various populations. So there is a serious need for us. This is what I'm really getting at. I'm appealing to us because this is more important than who's going to be president. This is more important than uh, what, do, what, what, what uh, is there going to be a vaccine in a month or next year? This is more important. This is forever. This is forever. And when the, those things fade away, we'll still be what we are because of our circumstance. The most important need for us today, you all who are sensitive to it, you all who know that something is off. We have to understand that it is upon us to research our situation as a group. One of the first recommendations or the first things Imam Muhammad told our community is we need people to go into the field of psychology to study. And to you and to come from that knowledge and to see what can be used to apply to what our condition is as a people to help us heal for one of a better expression to heal as a group. And the Quran is the most perfect book. It's the most excellent book. It has, as Allah says, a shifa. It is a healing for what is in the breasts. It can heal all of our problems. Again, the Imam said it has analysis and it has solutions for all of our problems as a people. But we have to search it. We have to look at it. We have to have faith in it. And we have to have faith in our own selves. And we have to have faith in Allah. That Allah will not leave us stranded, lost, if we believe in him. Allah puts us, as we spoke about last week, Allah put this great pressure on us to drive us to his word. And to drive us to his messenger, our prophet. And if we could find the solutions, and if we can find the healing, we won't be in uh, contradistinction to other Muslims we would help bring out more of the beauty of Islam more of the richness of Al-Islam we would have another excellent expression of Muslim life on this planet earth because we would have found that which could heal and will heal the most hurt and put down people in the history of humanity that should be what our spirit is and that's what the invitation for us is today we have a, a ways to go. But my conclusion is never give up on yourself. I lost, uh, <laughs> lost plenty. My conclusion is, but I'm still on my, where I want to be, so it's okay. <laughs> never give up on yourself. You should put in the practice of loving yourself as a creation of God. If God loves you, if God cares about you, if God is merciful to you, you should be the same on yourself. And we should also strive to put into the practice of loving one another. And believe me, that's very hard. And I know you know as well. It's very hard. This is not light stuff. It sounds simple, but this is the most profound. We have to put in the practice of attempting to or struggling to love one another. Allah is with us. Never lose hope, never lose the faith, and don't allow bad news to give you a bad spirit. The Quran is good news. The message of the Quran is the good news for our spirit today and for always. So we ask for Allah to forgive us our sins, 
have mercy upon us and be with us here and hereafter. Amen. And we have some announcements, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Atlanta Master Community Cares Program has ended round two. There are still needing uh, people who still need assistance, but um, but didn't apply can still do that and be on our waiting list. Previous applicants should have provided government issued IDs, proof of your income loss due to COVID-19, and documentation of late rent or utility bills. Please email any missing documents to communitycares at atlantamassjid.com. These documents are needed to process your application and provide your payment, so thank you very much. The Atlanta Masjid of Al-Islam is still closed for Juma. Updates are coming soon. Muhammad School's Road Race for Education is underway. Virtual race ends October the 31st, 40 miles in 40 days. For more information, you can look at roadraceforeducation.com. Muhammad School's annual gala has been rescheduled for spring 2021. Thank you for supporting Muhammad Schools of Atlanta. Donations and zakat payments can be made online at atlantamasjid.com. Cash, cash app, sorry, dollar sign, Atlanta Masjid. Treasure at atlantamasjid.com for your Zelle. And paypalme.me backslash Atlanta Masjid for PayPal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya la salah Hayya la salah Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar La ilaha illallah mm.